It is the oldest structure in the nation's oldest city. Completed in 1695, the Castillo de San Marcos was authorized by the Queen Regent of Spain a century after the founding of St. Augustine. It followed a brutal attack on the city by English pirates that left 60 people dead in the kidnapping of many more residents for ransom. The masonry star for overlooking the Matanzas River is made of a stone called coquina. Coquina is a type of limestone native to coastal regions around the world. Quarried from nearby Anastasia Island, the stone comprises tiny seashells that have been compressed over thousands of years. At the time of completion, the fort featured coquina walls up to 19 feet thick in places and more than 30 feet high surrounded by a moat and protected by dozens of cannons mounted at the bastions. The fortress came under attack from a British fleet in 1702 and then by General James Oglethorpe from Savannah in 1740. Throughout the decades, the Coquina walls held and St. Augustine was never captured. Spain was forced to give up the fort to Great Britain with the signing of the Treaty of Paris at the end of the French and Indian War in 1763. The British renamed it Fort St. Mark, the English translation of the original name. The Castillo was returned to Spain at the end of the American Revolution. It wasn't until 1821 that the U.S. War Department took possession, eventually giving it the name Fort Marion. After being decommissioned, the fort was declared a national monument, and the original name was reinstated. Today, this well-preserved piece of history is one of the most popular things to do when visiting St. Augustine. On this episode, I want to give you some tips if it's your first time exploring this landmark and run down what you should know before visiting the Castillo de San Marcos. All of that and so much more straight ahead from St. Augustine. Castillo de San Marcos is open to the public nine to five, seven days a week, except Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day. The fort does tend to get busy during peak seasons and can sometimes have a short wait for admission. Try going earlier in the day to avoid lines. It's considered a walk-in park with the entrance fee applying to each individual. Adult tickets are $15. Children 15 and under are admitted free with a paying adult. Only credit and debit cards are accepted. Keep in mind there are no refunds for weather, such as thunder and lightning, which will cause the closure of the upper level of the fort. Lower interior rooms remain open during inclement weather. We have a link on our website where you can find more information about discounts and interagency passes. At different times during the year, the fort participates in the National Park System's fee-free days. That's when the sites that normally charge an entrance fee offer free admission to everyone. Those dates for the current year are listed on your screen. There's a parking lot just outside the fort maintained by the city that is small and almost always full. If you're lucky enough to snag a spot, expect to pay $2.50 an hour at an automated station. We recommend parking inside the garage at the St. Augustine Visitor Information Center. Just a block away from the fort, you can generally find parking here, even on busier days. The current fee is $15 per vehicle, which covers you all day.
pets are not allowed inside this historic structure. However, if you've got Fido in tow, he will be allowed to walk around the exterior areas of the park. Dogs must be kept on a leash and be well behaved. Because of its age, not all areas of the fort are accessible. For example, the upper gun deck can only be reached by stairs. But the lower level of the fort and restroom area are wheelchair accessible, with the National Park Service always looking for ways to eliminate barriers to accessibility. All visitors should keep in mind the structure was made for warfare, not tourism. Surfaces are uneven and there are no safety rails. You must use caution when moving around here. One of the best resources for park information is available at your fingertips through the National Park Service mobile app. Download it to your smartphone before you arrive, giving you access to self-guided walking tours of the interior rooms, gun deck, and exterior grounds. Because cell service can be spotty inside the coquina walls of the fort, be sure to toggle on the Save This Park for Offline Use option after downloading. The app is free on Android and iPhone. The experience at Castillo de San Marcos is designed to be self-directed. Each room featured on the walking tour is designated with a circular icon, which you will notice on each exhibit panel. These panels and other displays help tell the story of the fort. Roaming park rangers can also help answer any questions you might have. The staff here also offers 15 to 20 minute long presentations throughout the day related to a particular theme. Program topics, locations, and times vary based on the season, weather, and visitation. Look for a sign in the courtyard area for presentations and any special events that might be happening the day you visit. One of the great things about this fort is that you'll find rangers and volunteers in period dress. They're usually more than happy to pose for pictures and answer any questions you might have. To further illustrate what the fort was like centuries ago are the musket and cannon demonstrations. These take place several times a day, most weekends, and can last up to 30 minutes. Fuego! Which historic weapons are fired at what times depends on volunteer attendance. Check with the rangers when you arrive at the park. Demonstrations are likely to be canceled during thunderstorms and periods of extreme heat. There are restrooms, water fountains, and a small gift shop on site but you won't find any food options, not even a soda or a snack machine. Only bottled water is available in the gift shop. There are dozens of restaurants within a half mile of the fort, so plan accordingly. In addition to the fantastic history, a major benefit of paying the admission fee to the park is the incredible views you get from the top. Almost every vantage point from the upper gun deck provides some unobstructed view of the city, including the Matanzas River. There's nothing like sitting on one of the park benches up here, taking in the views while cooling off thanks to the stiff breezes. A busy Saturday can average over 3,500 visitors at the park. Visiting midweek during the off-season, mid-September through mid-November is your best way to beat the crowds. That's it. Some tips and other things you should know before visiting the always popular Castillo de San Marcos in St. Augustine. More information on this topic, things to do in St. Augustine, and so many other destinations can be found on our website, chadgallivanter.com.
Hey, we're always here in St. Augustine shooting vacation guides just for you. Check out some of our other recent videos about St. Augustine. I think you'll find them really helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.